Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 14 of the Kiwi Burgers podcast. My name is Markiplier. My name is Markiplier. We've already made this joke before. Take it away, David. I got a... You I'm got not good a... at jokes on the spot. Take, take, uh, Jacob. Um... All right, well, he's uh, not available. Uh, please How have you guys been? How are you guys doing? Uh, I'm doing. What's <sighs> doing? Don't say your mom. Don't say your mom. Don't say your mom. I'm doing good. <laughs> doing your mom. Doing, doing, doing no! your mom. I've been sleepy. Doing your mom. You've been sleepy? <laughs> very, very, very sleepy. Oh my goodness. Knock a lot. Yeah. I've been pretty, pretty exhausted myself. Um,. There's been some some major life changes, and I'm losing sleep over it. Ooh, explain yourself. I'll, I will, I I'm not gonna explain myself. It is please personal, divulge. Please divulge. Your I will story. say. What is your social security number? <laughs> <laughs> um, sweaty. I don't socialize. How many tumblers? How can are I have a number? I was just gonna. I was gonna say. It's that the reason I'm all sleepy here. Is it's been. Now, don't get me wrong. The world might be ending. It's raining in California. Hey, oh, good my thing. goodness. Rain? In California? What if he drowned? <laughs> yes, even some portions of the state are getting fucking snow warnings. Goodness. Winter warnings, because it's like, oh, shit. It's Will cold. California finally freeze over? I hope so. <laughs> well, everybody knows that when hell freezes over, uh, something bad's going to happen. Well, hell's in Michigan, so we don't have to worry about that. Hell's in Ohio right now. Topical. Um, we talked about the... this last episode. Yeah, we did. Uh, one of the first topics I wanted to talk about was um, uh, Rolled Doll publisher edits Charlie and the Chocolate Factory to cut the world or to cut the word fat for inclusion and accessibility. Yeah. So it I... looks like they're going to go through. Uh, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory book, and they're going to change a it's, lot of the wording. It's not even the, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, it's a bunch of his old stuff. E- yeah, so, why? Uh, I because guess. we live in a time where, no, like, everybody's just psychotic. I had a talk about this earlier today. Places like Twitter have allowed crazy people to become normalized in society. And because they're normalized, it allows them to easier, like, Get, get together with their fellow crazies and now they're just unstoppable. Yeah. Echo chambers. We what need is... to go back to stigmatizing insane people and telling them to shut the fuck up. Yeah, we need to bully people more. We do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's one of those... Er, er, now, bullying to a certain degree, of course. Oh, but I of think course. that one of the one of the biggest, biggest problems for this is that I, I always am against censorship of any kind. I yes. think if you have something to say, let the people decide if you're stupid or not. Don't let, don't force people or don't don't remove what they say because you believe it's for the better good. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I that really tickles me on this is that they're they're taking a common classic book because the the article only sa- is only talking about uh, the his Charlie and the Chocolate Factory book, and they're 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 changing it. This is one of those times where you should go out and buy an original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory book. Well, you should do this do for that. basically basically all like forms of entertainment nowadays. You need to get that stuff before people start editing it. Like a bunch of stuff on places like Disney Plus have just had like entire things edited uh, edited out. My clunky. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't edited out. That was edited in. It's but still like, fun. Oh, it's still great, it is, though. It's very funny. Uh, just but, just a quick aside to give context to that, everyone. Um, if, if you're all familiar with the who shot first scenario in the original Star Wars film, there was an old edit that was added to one of the re-releases of the movie where Han dodges Greedo's shot in the cantina. But in the Disney Plus release, for some reason, they also added a useless part of Greedo's dialogue that is done by a different actor, has no subtitles, and has no reason for him to put it in there. He just screams out "Maklanki" before getting and then shot. He dies. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, there's. <laughs> 
with my crank kick. <laughs> That had me, that had me done yeah. for eight weeks straight. I couldn't hold it together. But yeah, so, so, so no, on, so on Logan, Disney if you Plus, feel if you feel like putting in the effort, if you can find that clip and edit it into the end of the episode, that'd be great. <laughs> Please do. I wanna, I wanna see that edited. In. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look on YouTube real quick for it. Y'all keep that conversation up. But yeah, back to my original point. There, are, there's an entire episode of The Simpsons on Disney Plus. Well, it's not on Disney. They got rid of it. You want to know why? It's because Michael Jackson was a character. And oh, yeah. that entire episode is just gone. Yeah. He didn't even, by the way, didn't even play himself. It wasn't like it was no, Michael Jackson. No, he played a character who thought he was Michael Jackson. He didn't yeah. even play Michael Jackson. But Disney got rid of it because Disney are fucking draconic. It, cen censorship nowadays is just fucking crazy. So much stuff just removed. It's why you really need like backups of all digital media you have. So yeah, you never know. It, it's crazy because everyone always used the old term "history is written by the victor." Now it's just doesn't matter who wrote it because people who are currently alive are just going to change it before your yeah. very eyes. History is malleable, so that sucks. <laughs> Let's keep the science going a little bit longer, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I I saw them. I believe I first saw like them in Ingram Dolls uh, books back like a week ago. People I follow on Twitter were talking about it, and it's like, yeah, like, what the fuck? You can't even just let us have this. You gotta change this as well. It's so inoffensive. Fat is a fucking word we use. Fat is part of the fucking like. Just it's just part of letters and words. But it you hurts can't just their feelings. It. I don't it's, care um, if it hurts their feelings. Fuck it's, them. it's one of those. Um, okay. Like okay, it's, if that's the case, like why uh, the only the only character in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory that was ever really described as fat was named Augustus, Augustus Gloop. Gloop. <laughs> he fucking deserves it. We ought to watch that. Sh we ought to watch that movie together. The kid who nearly which one? drowned trying to drink the, the chocolate river. The newest he, one. He, the, oh, he absolutely deserves to be called fat because he's a fucking little idiot that let his greed overtake him. In a way, Charlie Brown and the Chocolate Factory is a lot like a biblical story. You mean, you <laughs> I, mean like yeah, literature? They... It was all an allegory for some greater story or Probably. message. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory uh, is an allegory of... for fucking uh, the Seven Circles of Hell. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, this is like creepy bastard territory. All the kids in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory were dead the whole time. <laughs> 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 oh, the Hell Tunnel. I think... oh, fucking <laughs> uh, there was a there was a book series I remember as a kid. My sister read it. Uh, it was about kids who went to hell but they weren't 18 so they didn't go to adult hell they went to what? like hell junior what was the series name I, I gotta look this up real quick um fuck what was it called the, but the, like I remember there was a fat kid and his punishment was like they had him on like a hamster wheel and he had to run uh <laughs> and they, they had like this basket of food just like hanging over you him. know what I wish you know what I oh wish I wish fucking kids media had chutzpah again I want them to show fucking horrific things. We need to get back to scarring children. <laughs> I think one of the things is we definitely need to quit treating kids like they're pillows and we need to start like challenging them a little more. Yeah. Because that's what kids want. Kids like kids like Kids like to, to be, have their worldview challenged. challenged. They so like to it, learn new things. That when you're a child, that is the point in your life where you want to actively learn new things. But parents will just shove cocoa melon in their face, and their brain will stimulate, and then they'll start. They'll they'll have those shorter attention, shorter attention spans, and they get addicted to this sort if of flashy, fast-moving content. Like, okay, I've grown up most of my life, like on the internet around like electronics, but like parents that just let. Like YouTube and the internet, baby, their fucking children, piss me the fuck off. I it is, it, I it's hard to be a parent. I get that, but you fucking signed up for it, dumbass. It's it's like the uh, 
I mean, Seth did that joke in one of his videos. It's like if if you so, your parents sat you down with your tablet, leaving you on the internet as some surrogate for parenthood. I'm terribly sorry, and I'm sure yeah. they will take full responsibility for your impending developmental issues. <laughs> yeah, because fucking unrestricted access to the internet ruins you. Like there's, we saw this like a few years ago with Elsa Elsa Gate on fucking YouTube. Where it was just uh, revealed to the mass public about all those fucked up animation and kids channels. Oh yeah, like pregnant hey, Elsa that and Spider-Man ruined some kids. Sorry, I've spent the past like couple minutes uh, watching a Coco Melon video. <laughs> the good fucking god! You are part of the problem, I think. For what? <laughs> yeah, Coco kids Melon. media is completely fucking vapid nowadays. I didn't. We un- We've hit a point where fucking companies just know you can just shove bright lights and whatever the fuck in front of a kid, and they'll just just take it all because kids are fucking stupid. I'm but, I'm watching it to see what what parents are shoving in front of their kids because this is one of the this is the, one of the most highest viewed. I was gonna say, high- but but Sam, we could do the same to you. First off, use my real name, and I give I ain't give permission. We we were using everybody's real names here. I don't. Logang. Oh, you're trying to dox me? Wow, do- it's a first name. It's your first <laughs> name. One of the most common names on the fucking planet. You want me to tell you my social security number? Yes, please. Yeah. Oh. But Coco my Mellon point is, we can rhymes. sit you down in front of baby sensory videos, and you'll sit there giggling. I w- no, it's because uh, it's absurd. But like kids, but I'm not like using that for develop. I've developed. I'm not using. I don't need that no more. I'm laughing sure at it because it's absurd. Kids are laughing at it because they're fucking stupid and they don't know anything else. It has 155 million subscribers. Because kids, Nolan. kids' content on YouTube is the fucking easiest way of making money. If the you want to make video. money fast on YouTube, just produce fucking slop. Just produce slop. Don't put any effort into it. Just. Make shit like we're doing right now because we're doing a podcast. Podcasts are not difficult to make. Sam, how old are you? I'm fucking twenty-one. Okay, twenty-one. And I will. Just, uh, I will sit my no. fat ass on the ground and I will laugh at baby sensitive videos. <laughs> but that's only because my sense of humor is fucked. Jingly keys in the mic. And- Literally. Okay, I'm not that. Bad. I require no. more than just the noise. Um. No, but I was uh, I was just thinking about it because this is this is really fucked uh, how how we're moving as a as a, at least an American society into that. I don't know exactly what it's like in other countries. No, it's the exact uh, fucking same here. One of the one of the reasons I brought up um, the the censorship is because it's not happening in America; it's happening in Europe and including New Zealand, yeah. which is why I was yeah I was a bit interested in it because it's we when it comes to american censorship we censor we censor a lot of things too but um it's not as open i guess they don't yeah. really want people to know what's censored well of course for something not. Like, if, it, if people knew what was censored they'd be up in arms about it we can't have that Blech. yeah uh i was also going to talk about censorship and uh i don't remember if it was last episode or the episode before we were talking about GDQ, but they just banned Hogwarts Legacy. No. Well, their, yeah, because they events. need to fucking... GDQ sucks. Like, Games Done Quick is a fucking terrible organization. Could not agree more. I remember years ago, I watched a video on them. They suck. I love speedrunning. I fucking do not like most of the people that speedrun games. Shout out Cosmo Wright, by the way. If you know who that is, I'm sorry. You got to watch I, a man fall. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, my my favorite speedrunner, and I said this last episode too, was Easy Speezy. Love Easy that man. Speezy. Yeah, he's Cute pretty cool. Uh, I like a speedrunner known as uh, Ecdysis. He speedruns a lot of horror games. Recently did a speedrun of a cool game known as Illbleed. I fucking love that video. Because <laughs> hmm. Illbleed is a really fucking Games. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, no, that is, that on the original point, point, GDQ sucks. Speedrunners, majority of them, just suck. No, that's rude. That's rude. Uh, I, vocal minority. Vocal minority. Suck. A lot of, a lot of speedrunners are, like, fine. I, th I assume they're good people. Probably not, but I'm just assuming. But yeah, GDQ, just awful. Awful fucking organization. They do a lot of good stuff. They raise money for charity and all that, and I'm never going to shit on somebody for doing that. I don't care how fucking scummy you are. If you are genuinely raising money for a good cause, good on you. I don't care. But GDQ, as an organization on the whole, blow. They are fucking terrible. Oh yeah, that clip. <laughs> I would <laughs> really prefer if you'd be quiet. I mean, that's just oh. what happens. You get a lot of spurs in the same place. <laughs> Uh, they, they don't know how to interact in social situations, so they fall apart. <laughs> yeah. The only no, I, I've just been silent on this because the only speedrun I ever watched was somebody who's not really a speedrunner, but he just really likes speedrunning Super Mario 64, and the stream was just him trying to beat his own PR. Yeah, speedrun speedrunning's interesting. I always like uh, personal favorite categories like glitchless 100 percent because it's always cool to see how fast you can beat the game in the intended way. Like, glitch glitch speedruns are fine, but I always like that added aspect of not using, like, any big exploits to just skip parts also, of the game. Th this guy, he did a great job. I think he, he, he got 29 minutes? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. It, it's insane how fast you can finish some games. But yeah, speed Would you guys... Would you guys like to hear the disallowed games from the GDQ? No. Well, you said Hogwarts Legacy. But I yeah, feel sure. like we should avoid this because I will just. I don't. I don't want this entire episode to just be outrage. Okay. I was it, just gonna say um, some of the funny games on here, like the Five Nights at Freddy's series. <laughs> Why? I didn't know. I didn't know that could be sped ran. I can. I but can I take a so. crack at why. Also, yeah. No, I don't think it can be speed ran. <laughs> At, le at least uh, one through Ultima Cost of Night. You can definitely speedrun the uh, Satiric Breach. Yeah. Um, but I, it, I, I, it's, a he it's a coin flip between uh, the reasons why. <laughs> Other than that, most of the uh, Frog Faction... Or Frog Fractions? What is that? <laughs> I think that is a... Oh, I know that one. Yeah. It's literally just like a teaching game. Where it's just... Uh, you just do fractions and there's frogs. Huh. Why? I don't know. Probably because it's, like, shit. Well, there's no tech to make it actually go faster. So the fastest time is always consistent. Okay. Well, I just, I thought that was funny that they had banned FNAF, because they, I feel like they're really hitting their fan base there with that one. Yeah, <laughs> but like I said, it is a coin flip between the reasons why, but I feel like I know both. Alright, uh, what positivity can we talk about? Pizza Tower! Pizza Tower. I know nothing about Pizza Tower, so you I, neither do I. This, this segment will probably be really short, but all I'll say is I just finished it recently, and it is probably my second favorite indie game I've played this year. Well, actually, no. It's tied first for my favorite indie game I've played this year. It is a uh, Metroidvania platformer. Not Metroidvania, I wouldn't say. Just, just a platformer. It, I mean, it plays like Metroid or Castlevania, so I feel like Metroidvania kind of fits. Nah. It, okay. If anybody what, has played, is... if anybody has played one of the Wario Land games, it's like that. Oh. What is a Metroidvania game? It. What I just said. Metroidvania is like typically, uh, yeah, two D two D game where you. It involves like lots of backtracking and picking up new items to go to new areas. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, just for a hyper-basic definition. Yeah. So, I, f I forgot... I always forget that the Wario Land games were games the inspiration exist. for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's why but it's like... It's, I wouldn't call it's it... funny. That's it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty it's much... Funny. It's like, it's, it's, it's got... It's got really solid gameplay, and it's funny... <laughs> Uh, despite being... I assume it was drawn in MS Paint. The game looks, it looks really like it, fucking yeah. good. Animations uh, like are smooth. 
Yeah, I just finished the game, and like I said, tied first on my favorite indie game I played this year. It, it was really fun, despite me not being that good at platformers. Uh, do you want to tell the people the name of the protagonist that you play Absolutely. As? You play as Pepino Spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> so funny! A Pepino pizzeria Spaghetti. owner who's who has, in uh, debt. PTSD. Yeah, he's in debt, he has PTSD. He has a very short temper, and it's... Just go play the game! It's 20 bucks on Steam, absolutely worth the fucking price. Go play it. The game is fantastic. It has a great soundtrack, great visuals, great gameplay. There's and almost it also has the noise. <laughs> it does. It has the noise. It also has Mort the Chicken. The fuck is the noise? And Brick the Rat. It does. I love Brick. He's such a silly guy. Like All the characters in this game are awesome. They're just yeah. super fun. All well designed. They all have their own personality, despite the fact they don't say a fucking lick of dialogue. Like, you can tell what their personality is like just through how they uh, interact. It's great. <laughs> yeah, like, how many times during his boss fight the noise just flips you off? <laughs> or shakes his ass. Still twerking on it. <laughs> well, that's funny. What a, that's a total uh, what, a, I, what a cool indie who's, game. Who's the... Who, uh, what's the name of the people that made it? Uh, Mick Pig was one of the devs. Hold on. Uh, well, whoever it is, whoever you are, uh, feel f uh, feel free to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, developer is uh, Tor de Pizza. Uh, but I feel like I think the main dev is known as Mick Pig. Yeah. Go 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 play it. Twenty bucks on Steam. Absolutely worth the price. Uh, <clears throat> I can't say that about a lot of games I've played recently. This one, definitely I can. Hmm. Yeah, what are, what are some cool indie games you guys have played? Ultra cool. I have, I have another one floating around in my head right now that I really enjoy. I, I, don't, I don't know, I actually. Don't, yeah, I don't think I played a lot of indie games. Just in general, or like recently? In general, just in general. Uh, I always like the indie market because it's always really cool to find like niche sort of stuff. Yeah, hidden it's gems indie are market. Great. It's yeah. always the indie market that experiment a lot more. Yeah, and I like that. But there's a whole like wider variety of stuff. Not to say AAA gaming is all bad. Just you know, mostly. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of there's a lot of fun indie games I play. Have you guys uh, played any uh, any Diablo clones recently? Because that's what I've been playing ninety nine percent of the time now. <laughs> with 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 Max. Yeah, but I think I I also we've been playing Grim Dawn together. Yeah. But I've also picked up uh, Titan Quest, which is the predecessor to Grim Dawn. <laughs> and then I might get into Fate the Traitor Soul again because I used to play that shit when I was a kid. I I always do like Soul Diablo. Diablo likes, but I feel like the quality between them varies a lot. Uh, as opposed for a recent one I played, I played a game called Chaos Pain, which is set in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. For what it yeah. is, it by itself is good, but compared to something like Diablo 3, or Diablo 2 even, it, it's not as good. But by itself, we, it's a good game. We, we could talk about Diablo 4 and our expectations. I don't this. fucking know anything about it, and I am not interested in it. Yeah. Apparently, uh, the the Diablo 4 like collector box doesn't even include the game. Lop. What? Let me, let me look this up real quick. Yeah, I, I don't even <clears throat> care. Blizzard can do whatever the fuck they want. I don't give a shit. Fuck, fuck up your company on your own time. Don't waste mine. Wow, yeah, fucking... new, new one hundred dollar Diablo Four collector's box doesn't include game. Wh why? What? Here's what it comes with: candle of creation, wow, cult mouse pad, cloth map of sanctuary, pin of the Haradrim, Diablo Four collector's art edition book, and matted fine art prints. Two of them. Never got that. Why pins? 
Do you think that it was just like a misprint and they just didn't mention the game because it felt obvious? I don't know. But I, honestly, anything I'm, Blizzard would do would surprise me. There's no way, because how would you not say that it doesn't include the, the game? Well, no, the what only I thing mean that... is you, you don't, you, you, they didn't mention the game because why would you not mention the game? The only or why thing... would you need to? Because it's like, okay, well, you're buying this, why wouldn't it come with the game? The only thing Blizzard could do that would surprise me is if they stopped sexually harassing <laughs> Oh, uh, fuck you, Blizzard. <laughs> you suck. All I was gonna say is that if Diablo Immortal had anything to show what 4 would be, yeah, we're fucked. Yeah. It's a good thing I have no investment in anything anymore. They're saying that they're not giving you the 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 game itself because they want you to have the option of which edition you want to buy. What? So instead of forcing you to pay for like the ultra mega super edition, uh, you could you could pay, you could just buy the base game instead of the the super deluxe version. But you can f- fucking do that already. That's what I was just gonna say. This it's is such the flimsiest argument ever because it's like oh yeah no you can just choose the edition you want. You, you mean, like, the thing Steam has been doing for fucking years? That many games have been doing for fucking years? Fucking you mean that you, you couldn't about. just give me the hot... You couldn't just give me the highest edition of the game? Even if you had to increase the price of the box a little bit? Listen, $100 for a collector's box is not a lot for people who really want to collect it. Yeah. Yeah, like, but here's the... Here, let me compare it to this. Back in 2019... I pre-ordered the collector's edition of Sekiro. It was $80. And it came with the game in a custom tin case that had a really cool cover art, as well as a... uh, I don't know what material that it was made of, but a stylized map of the game, a vinyl statue of Sekiro, uh, three replica coins from in-game, the soundtrack, and uh, then there was a, a letter opener shaped like the Mortal Blade from in-game, and then I think there I think there was something else, but I have it in the box uh, still. Maybe. Point is, 80 bucks, 80 and bucks. you got all, all that. that. It's because... FromSoft is, like, the only fucking, like, decent AAA dev in both terms of, like, morality and games. Because FromSoft know their player base, and they know if they fuck them over, their player base will raise hell. But it's like, FromSoft aren't scumbags. That That's a thing with a lot of, like, Japanese devs, I think. Not to say all of them aren't scumbags. Capcom have done some shitty things, but I feel like the quality of Capcom's, like, uh, like games make up for that a bit. Still not defending it. What I'm saying is at least Capcom will give you a decent product. Let's not talk about yeah. Konami, then. Jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Konami will just fuck you. Konami don't give a shit. I, d- I don't include them, because they are just cunts. They ruined Fuck the game. Well, that, rem- that reminds me, are you guys still excited for Silent Hill 2? Who is at this point? Uh... I forgot that was happening. Sounds like one of the first topics well, we used Yeah, I was going to say, that was like one of our first topics ever. <laughs> I legitimately kind of, it kind of faded from my mind that it was happening. And yeah, honestly, they're... if I'm just going to say, if you are excited for it, I think you're a dumbass. I mean, but the it's a personal attack on that NCC. point. I will expand. Typically, look, it's Konami, first off. It's fucking Konami. <laughs> if you're excited for fucking anything that comes out of Konami, I think you're retarded. Oh, I can't say that word. <laughs> you believe that one out? Point is. <laughs> <laughs> point is, if you are excited for fucking anything that comes out of the septic blaze tank known as Konami, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Second off, Silent Hill 2 isn't a thing that needs a remake. It still holds up. The game still looks oh, yeah. good. 
The story still holds up. The acting still holds up. All it needs is, like, a port. But here's the thing. Konami still fucked that up because they lost the source code. Remember when they uh, remastered it, quote-unquote, for the Xbox 360, but they lost the fucking source code? I was unaware that happened. Yeah, they lost the source code for Silent Hill 2, so they had to rebuild it from the ground up, and it turned out worse. Point is, Silent Hill 2 isn't something that needs a remake. At most, it needs a port. But even then, if you are on PC, you just emulate it. You just emulate it easily. In fact, no, actually, you don't need to. Because Silent yeah. Hill 2 has a PC version. I it fucking does. know, because I have it. So do I. Go to www.archive.org, go to their software section, and search for Silent Hill 2. Then go find Silent Hill 2 Director's Cut, and you can just play the game, no fucking problems, on PC for free. Fuck you, Konami. <laughs> I fully fucking endorse this. Because you shouldn't be giving money to fucking Konami. But yeah, no, just do that. It's gonna be better than Silent Hill 2 Remake. And I'll tell you what, if the Silent Hill 2 Remake is good, then you know what, hats off to Konami. Good job. That still doesn't a fucking fluke. excuse your track record, dumbasses. I will never excuse Konami for making Metal Gear Solid 3 and its cutscenes completely remastered and put it on a pachinko machine. Yeah. Konami loved. I, I was, fucking... I was, I was waiting because honestly, when you started that and said for making Metal Gear Solid Three, and you paused, I was gonna have some grievances. <laughs> fucking Konami loved to do like the opposite of make money. They love to lose money. They, they like to do just the opposite of what sounds good. Oh, we're making Solid Hills. Fucking can that. Yeah. Or, oh, one of our best uh, directors. Uh, wants to stop making this game series that we've been making for t almost 20 years. Uh, no, force him to make two more games so he quits. Starts yeah. his own development company. And then we'll make our own game, and it's objectively the worst one. Yeah. Because they couldn't make anything new, they just had to reuse assets in all capacity. Yeah. So Sometimes you think it'd be so fucking easy for a dev... Or just a, like a, a, a producer would be like, yeah, this will make us more money, so let's do this. You would think that wouldn't be a hard thing to do, but apparently it fucking is. Like, uh, like, like FromSoft, their publisher, uh, not making the Demon Souls remake uh, multi-platform. Oh. Or actually choosing to, potent, you know, port uh, Bloodborne to PC. For the love mm -hmm. of God! <laughs> We've been waiting years God. for it. It's been nearly... Please! Wait, Bloodborne Damn! Came out it's been almost 20... 10 years since the game launched. It ain't fucking yeah. making money anymore. Launch your own PC and break in the cash. It's so easy. People will spend double the price for a PC. Legitimately, of the only good thing... Uh, well, there's a lot of good things about Sony uh, letting a lot of their exclusives come to PC. The fact that because they're doing that means that Bloodborne on PC is at least a tiny possibility is a very good thing. Mm. Bloodborne's such a good game. It is! It's legitimately my favorite FromSoft game. I've I think heard it so is many good things. easily their best game. I've heard so many great things about Bloodborne, but I've never had the chance to get it because I don't have a PS4. I bought a PS4 exclusively for Bloodborne. And while in the long run that was a dumb financial like decision, at the very least, the reason why I regret losing my, why is, I regret selling my PS4 is I can't play Bloodborne anymore. <laughs> Bloodborne is such a fucking fantastic game, and I really, really do hope it gets ported one day. Because like I want more people to experience Bloodborne. Everything about it was fucking fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for breaking the silence. This is this is way out of my league. I don't know nothing about this kind of stuff. <sighs> what do you know? Born to PC. Uh, video game wise, I know. Um, uh, my head's a little hamster wheel uh. right now. <laughs> 
game is good. That's where, uh, need to come up with a funny edit of the, uh, all girls born after 1999 know how to charge their phone, eat hot chip, and lie. Just make a version <laughs> of that, but it's, uh, Logan only knows how, like, shitty things about video games. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know, uh, I've, I've played the Forza Horizon 5 game. Oh, yeah? Did they drive the car? I drove the car. Yeah, Cargo room. That's the only thing that matters, baby! The fucking Met! It's just, so, that's literally the, man, I love a sports ball. Did the ball go? It sure did, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually kind of, it's more fun than I expected it to be. But uh, I think what really made it for me was they were like, do you want to drive Hot Wheel cars? And I was like, fuck yeah. And next thing you know, I'm driving Hot Wheel cars. Didn't they do that like little... three games ago? Yeah, they did. But I don't <laughs> I don't keep up with any of this stuff. I just went, I want to try a racing game. I remember. And I picked up Forza Horizon 5. I remember back when like my internet was down for a week, I played a bunch of Forza Horizon 2. Because uh, I literally had almost nothing else to do. <laughs> uh, other than that, I, I guess I gave Eve Online a good chance. Oh, good lord! Uh, uh, Microsoft Excel was never more fun. Uh, but I haven't been playing too much games. I've been playing, as I said, Grim Dawn with Max, <clears throat> and that's been pretty fun. Uh, I played. I'm I'm playing the. Uh, uh, Titan Quest by myself. The and Titan Quest. <laughs> the Titan Quest. I am you staying on that app, the the Tic Tac. Tic Tac. <laughs> I've been getting back I... to playing uh, Borderlands Two, which is a game I put an ungodly amount of time in back on the Xbox. Oh, uh, next Phenomenal. episode we need Max on to talk about his uh, <laughs> Evil Genius Two. Game. Yeah, he's been. Oh, that'll be a great. Oh yeah, no, dude, keep talking about. I'm just gonna close my. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, I play a lot of. I play an ungodly amount of. He's gonna see this episode, and he's gonna not be happy. (laughs) Oh, he don't watch these episodes. Neither do I. Tell him to watch these episodes. (laughs) Why would I watch my own episodes? I was in them. I, I, rem- I was that dude. You don't need to remind That's, me. That is, I am the only one on this podcast that rewatches episodes. Because you're a oh, fucking narcissist. I was going to say no, because you're the love, editor. You love hearing your own damn voice. No. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, I might start re listening to them for that once my new <laughs> recording stuff comes in. Because I spent a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money on equipment. Uh, um. <laughs> and I'm I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. Even if even if it's not just for this, I'm definitely gonna do some some recording stuff. Yeah. I'm, Otherwise, I'm I'm happy with uh, my, I'm gonna do a lot of uh, I was gonna say I'm happy with my microphone I got for Christmas, the one I'm using now. Only issue is I need to fix the fucking acoustics in this room because you can hear me echo quite bad. Other than that, this microphone's great. Yeah. Uh my my plan was to uh, to give my mic away uh, once I get this new one in. I Here's the thing. A lot of people, when I have junk, not even junk, things to just give away, like uh, like my 3D printer. Mm. I had a resin 3D printer. I paid $200 for it, and I don't really care to sell it. I just want to get rid of it. Mm. So people are like, well, you should like put in the effort to, to get money back on it. And I'm like, I don't care. I just want to give it away. Whoever wants it, take it. Mm. I've done that with so many things. When I replace something in my apartment, I always either set it by the dumpster so that somebody can just pick it up. Some homeless person. Or somebody, somebody is actively in, like interested. Like, I bought a new TV recently. I'm going to set the old one by the dumpster, and then somebody's going to have a new TV. Yeah. Uh, I did the same thing with my Keurig machine. I bought a new Keurig machine... And somebody can just have my old one. I don't like selling things because it makes me feel like I, I'm i trying to haggle them out of something. I just want it gone. Mm. So that's that's something that 
I, I feel and also, like a... typically if you buy something for like a hobby, you don't expect a return on investment. The, the yeah, return exactly. is the amount of like, like, you know, entertainment you get out of it. Uh, one of the things I bought a while ago was, um, I buy a lot of Rode products. Because I, uh, I bought a Rode NT1, I bought the interface for it, I bought a big old boom arm for it, I own a Rode... Uh, a Rode Wireless Go 2, uh, which is a really great transceiver. And then I just bought two Rode Lavalier 2s. Mm. Uh, and I think with the with the Lavaliers, me and, me and Max are going to do a lot of content in person uh, for this, for the channel. I think that'd be pretty fun. That uh, does sound fun. Uh, and I own a pretty decent camera. I gotta buy a shutter for it, though, like a manual shutter, so that I can bypass the 30-minute DSLR recording limit. Mm. Uh, fuck you, Europe, for that stupid fucking tax law, because now I'm suffering from it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that is it is what I plan to do. There's a lot of updates, um, but I'll say that at the end of the episode. Honestly, I don't even know, like, what's the point of buying a camera anymore when, like, phones typically have, like, the same level of quality. I bought this camera a good bit ago, but, um, I don't know. I can it tell just, you right now that the nice. camera on my phone does not have the quality of a dedicated phone. I, I'm, I'm saying, like, you know, most phones. Like, like, your most, like, up-to-date phone. There you go. Not the most, because yeah. there's not a lot of people who are going to be shilling out that $1,000. Well, I mean, just don't be poor. <laughs> just don't be poor. Easy as that. God. Simple as that. Uh, pop if me you're homeless, just buy a home. <laughs> you know what, David? I don't appreciate you calling me out like that. <laughs> we'll see you in Milwaukee. Um, Milwaukee? Yeah. Milwaukee's best? God, I didn't think we were drinking cheap tonight. I don't know, I just kind of want to go to Milwaukee. Milwaukee's in Texas, right? No. No? I know nothing of geography. <laughs> I see one of these uh, TikToks all the time of, of Americans in Europe, and they say they're from America, and then immediately they start bombarding them with geography questions. I mean, that's just kind of... How like, you... oh, you're American? Uh, where Where is this country? Where is this country? Where's Where's Spain? Where's Portugal? Where's France? And these people are all... They're just being harassed by Europeans for geography. <laughs> not I that mean, that's one of the things that has consistently, like, upset me. Well, not upset me. Pissed me off more like It's this European and British, like, sense of superiority over Americans. It's like, f fuck off. You're not yeah, enlightened yeah. because you're a European. You're a fucking dumbass. I, it just makes me think. I could do the same shit to you. Uh, where's Ohio? Where is Connecticut? Where is Arkansas? Where's Vermont? Yeah, where? where is the forgotten state of Arkansas? It's not spelled it's a, like you think it is. It's in America. <laughs> where is... See? You never where's forget fucking, where that is. Where, Where's fucking bubblegoop swamp? I dare all of you to try and find Wyoming. You ain't it's gonna find it. It's a chunk error. <laughs> 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 I still stand by that. Colorado. That one's pretty easy. It's just a square. Yeah. But make sure you don't... <laughs> make sure you don't accidentally pick South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's just, it's always funny that, um, I, it's one of the things TikTok's like showing me is, uh, is Europeans hating on Americans, uh, and a lot of British cop shows, and then in turn it also shows me a lot of American cop shows. I absolutely love the British cop shows, because the ones I watch are like repossessions and debt collectors, oh. and it's just two massive British guys with like the meatiest accents going into people's homes and then you just hear a barrage of of angry like i guess typical british like lower class slang <laughs> lower class the disgusting lower class 
<laughs> because well, these people are like oh, like thank you, okay. me. <laughs> one of the one of the exam. I can't do it. Fucking minking. Oh god, <laughs> the 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 freestyle. Uh, oh. One of the one of the guys had had uh, to pay this lady like five thousand pounds because he had he had contracted her for a service, and she only ever received sixty dollars. And so the bailiffs come in and they go, "We have a high court writ from the council to seize your assets." <laughs> and I'm thinking that that should come with a Dark Souls boss meter. Health meter, <laughs> like good God, yeah. Uh, and they they like usually nine out of ten, the 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 person who's getting their asset seized will call the police, and they'll be like they'll say something like these these brutes are buggering in my space or whatever. <laughs> that doesn't mean what you think it does. Bravo. <laughs> it means they fucking. Uh, <laughs> Get these guys out! They are fucking in my house, talking about something about a foreclosure. I don't know what the fuck they're on. Uh, and then the police will come, and then just the big brute bailiffs like show them a paper and go, "We're here on the, we're here with the high court." And then the police are like, "Okay, yeah, we're on their side now." Yeah, it's all it's always so funny to to see those. Uh, but in American uh, cops. They have. They are so much more disconnected. Whenever people go into debt collection, an American will come out and start screaming, freak like belligerently screaming, and oftentimes will attack the 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 bailiff. Yeah. And the bailiff usually in America is, I guess, prepared for this because he just immediately has like four other guys that that shove people off, and they like speed run getting that car hooked up to a tow and. It's because like Americans, have, it. Americans have a higher ratio of crazy people. You're not wrong. The land, masses, say that the land me. masses directly proportional to insane people, except for Japan. Japan just like I like that. I think <laughs> I, it's just so interesting to watch those videos because they're I don't know. It's it's funky seeing how another country's legal system functions. Yeah. I always find that to be cool. Cause it <laughs> the funny thing know. is, they're both bad at the end of the day. Wah wah. Yeah, they're not, not, not very great. That is pretty much my my uh, TikTok corner. I don't, I don't, I don't use any social media other than Twitter. You pay your telly license. Oh, did you? By did the way, they like can't anything? enforce that. By the way, if you don't fucking pay it, they can do nothing. What is it? Fucking television license. It's something the British Broadcasting Company does. Because the British Broadcasting Company is like, uh, it, 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 it's publicly funded. And that's what the television license is for. It's not for just owning a television. It's you paying to keep them in business, which I don't give a shit about. They can get fucked. The BBC sucks. <laughs> and if you don't pay that license, they can do nothing to enforce any kind of law. They, they can do fuck all. Because the yeah. fucking Brit British police are a bunch of limp-wristed you-know-whats. And they can't do nothing. They are, like, oh, afraid a... to get into confrontations. There was a... a Not that I, I have run a foul of law or anything. <clears throat> I will choose uh, not to say anything mean in response to that. I'm a good boy. <laughs> oh, no, come on, let's hear it. I was gonna say you gotta leave the house in order to get a run afoul of the law. That's true. That's true. Anyway. <laughs> Hold on. I feel like I had... Oh, I had a tweet pulled up a while ago, but I can't find it now. Well, it was basically please. Andrew Tate. It was Andrew <laughs> Tate saying that that my wife snitched on me. I want to know all why. I did was love. Her. All I did was love her. This I truly won't. means that men <laughs> are men are more loyal than women. <laughs> I'm like, what? I fucking you do some. I fucking you do the love Andrew Tate because he is 100 percent certifiably fucking insane. 
like, there are certain people out there where it's like, I don't hate them, I find them fucking hilarious because of just how bad shit they are. Do you it, 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 fucking, uh, he, He's definitely one of them, Andrew Tate. Just the stuff that comes out of his mouth is so fucking ridiculous, I don't see how anyone takes him seriously. That's the thing. This is why I don't want they're, censorship to be a thing. You let very, these people fucking talk. They're very, very lonely people. They are. This is why I don't want censorship to be a thing. If you just let crazy people talk, they will dig their own graves. You don't have to do anything. You can just point and laugh. So Andrew Tate is just a person you can't take seriously. You got to and if you do him take him so seriously, you get your own God, you need help. I don't know, man. He's just one of those people. Do I think we already mentioned this quote? But he had, he had talked about him. Uh, make he, he had, I don't know if it was an example or if he really did it, but he had had his wife make him two cups of coffee a day. <laughs> and wow. Oh yeah, he she kept saying, "Why am I? Why am I making the second cup?" And he said, "Just do it." And then after a bunch of time of her making two, and he kept dumping one, she stopped making the two, and he got mad about it. And then uh, he had asked, or she had asked, why am I keep making this two, these two? And he goes, uh, it's because I would die for you if someone were to break in. I would die protecting you. No, he fucking... And you can't even make me, you can't even make me a Andrew, second cup of coffee. Andrew Tate is a fucking pussy. And I'm just thinking, like, what? That, that reminds me of something I saw. I was checking out an artist, because uh, I was like, damn, that new art is like, okay, let me see that discography... I see them put out a tweet that caught me so off guard, I just started laughing. The the tweet was, um, they they don't like <laughs> they don't like when people just like dilute rap down to just talking about like singing about uh, like sex and money and killing people and all that. And then they fucking said the reason why people do that is because it is a right wing ploy to keep marginalized people oppressed. I fucking well, saw that and I just burst out laughing because it's like what the fuck kind of a stretch is that? That fucking, like, oh my god, what kind of mental gymnastics have you performed to get to that point? What, what the fuck? Right wing propaganda. Uh, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> it, was just, it just came out of nowhere, because it was not, like, lining up with what this person had posted before. Like before this, they hadn't posted like anything political, and I just kept scrolling back. I seen them post that, and it just blindsided me. Oh, uh, Twitter! Twitter can be a funny place sometimes. Most of the time, it's over it is frustrating. Twitter's a place where yeah. you voluntarily lose brain cells. Yeah, I I I cultivate my timeline to make sure I don't see any fucking idiots or just crazy people. And it's it, a lot of times it's not even like losing brain cells because what you read is bad. It's just it's so shocking that your body just like in out of necessity just shuts off for a second. Yeah, you do the second to reboot and process what the hell you're seeing. And depending on what the con the content of the post is, you may have to reread it a few times before that takes effect. That's what I had to do. Because you need to figure out, are they being genuine or not? Yeah, I saw that and I was like, wait, what? this has to be a fucking joke. But no, I, I've said this before as well. Like, artists, for some reason, are basically just all batshit. It's like, what drove you to this point? What eldritch knowledge did you receive that made you good at art but also go mad? It's like, there's no fucking way some of these artists are, like, real people. There's no way. Because it's like, you are the stereotypical, like, person I think of when I think of an artist. Do you, do you think, do you think that it's too dangerous to mention a certain artist? Uh, depends. The, the one that had his brain dipped in orange Fanta? Oh, him! No, it's not dangerous what? to mention him. Uh, Fucking Corey. Corey, Corey Spazkin. That dude is the definition of a cum brain. His fucking head is empty aside from the fucking semen that has accumulated in him. The thing that upsets me most about Corey is the fact he is actually good at his art. And that upsets me because I have seen the man behind the mirror and he is fucking unhinged. Who is 
Corey. Smash Kid, he's on the Only Plays cast. And he is by far the most unhinged member. Oh, oh. Yeah. It looks like he got pulled from 2000 BC. Yeah, he's Armenian. No, he isn't. That's not true. <laughs> the LA hair got to him and turned him square. Yeah, because... Oh, here. Pull pull up an image of him from long before... Jamie, pull that shit up. Yeah, no. So people generally don't like this guy. No, people like him, but only because he... The stuff he comes out with is fucking deranged. Like, it's like on... As a member of the cast on any plays, most so far everyone that watches the sh- watches their channel, uh, are annoyed with him most of the time. Yeah, no, Cor- Corey is definitely the like more annoying host. Hmm. See, it's one of the things I kind of wish I I had watched Oni plays a lot earlier. So here's what he used to look like. But I just never got. It only plays is funny. I feel like a lot of the uh, compilations you see that they produce and fans produce, I don't think do them justice. I prefer going by the series episode by episode because you lose out uh, with the uh, with the compilations. You lose a lot of minutia that I think is uh, fun to listen to. Uh, I, I like to uh, not to interrupt you, but to remind everyone that time is a vast, very quickly approaching one hour. Yep, we got we got about four minutes. Left. Oh, all these <laughs> deadlines! <laughs> Such a hard stance. What? You don't want to go over an hour? I think well, you're just scared. Uh, <laughs> we have we have prior yeah, I know, plans. I know we got we got a uh, calling from a higher tower. <laughs> but a podcast could go on for as long as you want it. Do not be afraid of people that will say low man bad. Most people should be well, afraid. Con- let's, let's continue the like conversation we were at. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah, no. It, it, where were we at? We were talking about Corey, I know that, but where specifically? Cor- oh, yeah, I was talking about... Yeah, no, there's a lot of minutiae that gets lost in only plays compilations, and that the minutiae is what I enjoy. That's about it. <laughs> Okay. You said he dipped his head in Fanta. What was that whole thing about? No, he dipped. Brain got dipped in Fanta. What? It's so just joke. a joke saying that that's what made him stupid. Oh, I even stupid, just crazy. Why am I seeing a lot of a lot of him with like Chris Chan stuff? Because he is <laughs> absolutely one hundred percent fucking equatable to Chris Chan. Absolutely. Well, I, it's like every other edit is some like like. Hold on. Cause, cause, well, on Oni plays, they reference Chris Chan often. Yeah. And Corey is yeah. basically the closest to Chris Chan out of that friend group. Mm. In just yeah, like everything. Like I was gonna say, is it just a bunch of like picture, like art pieces of him wearing the 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 famous uh, Chris Chan striped the shirt? Medallion of power. Yeah. 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 No, it's just because he is the like closest. Just remember, there was a point in time where Kanye West wore that shirt. Kanye does, does <laughs> not know of the significance. Not at the time he didn't. I doubt he does now. Fair. I mean, Christian was Chris a big Chan deal when some, people pointed it out. Yeah, Christian is basically something only like tonally aligned, online people like us can. I mean, yeah. you say that, but I didn't really know anything about Chris Chan until about two years ago. That's fair. I've known about Chris Chan for a while. But, I heard, like, um, rumblings of him back in, like, 2017, and then after that is when I started to fully understand. Yeah, I, I heard about him before that, because... Oh, Oni plays. Yeah. mentioned him. And some other uh, people on YouTube have whispered yeah. his name. Corey, Corey is Christian. If Christian had any artistic talent, hmm. I was gonna say he's Christian. No. If Chris had stayed off the internet for like the first fifteen years, yeah. As far as I know, Corey has never did all the family members, so that makes him like marginally better. <laughs> Only marginally though, because it's still Corey. We're talking about. Remember the Orimo statue. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
All right. Uh, we're going to start wrapping up here. Um, I'd like to remind people that our Patreon is updated with all of our episodes. Is there a reason you YouTube? give money to We have a Patreon. Time? Pay us money. Not. There is. It is currently just support. Okay. We don't have any additional content. Yet. I'm not asking for you to pay anything. I'm just Yet. letting you know I am, it's though. Updated. Even though I won't see a single cent out. Uh, and besides, like it's it's just support for us to start getting better uh, quality and keep us invested. We'll then keep we'll keep making more. We'll get better, and as time goes on, we will have actual things to put on there that are worth people getting. Once it once once more support comes in, we'll be able to dedicate more time to it, and then it'll just ramp up from there. Uh, but they currently, take the money uh, the, wrong. <laughs> yes. No, I I can guarantee that every penny that gets funneled into us is going to be put towards the channel. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, the YouTube's updated with all of our episodes. The tw uh, the uh, Patreon's updated with all the channels, and hopefully we'll get more uh, thumbnails going in. Hopefully, I got somebody who likes doing that. Oh, you did finally. Well, just the thumbnails. I mean, still. Yeah, but it's uh, channel art is still not there. Send, send in, we gotta, send in submissions. We'll decide. We'll, we'll decide. Thank you for watching this episode. Uh, take it away, anybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you next time. <laughs>